Janet Farah and Gavin Bone. Thank you very much for coming on My Magical Thing. It's amazing to see you lovely, lovely witches there in Sunny Island. Um, and you've got your magical things with you. Uh, they're astonishing. Um, tell us about your magical thing. OK, back in March 2005, we went to South Africa, specifically Cape Town, to do workshops with the pagan community. And much to our surprise, we were asked if we would come out to one of the townships by the Lesotho Sangoma. Um, we'd received a message uh, from one of the elders. It seems the ancestral spirits have told her we had to be made elders. So we arrived in this little township in the middle of nowhere. And it was what are called Mandela houses, which are breeze block built. Uh, with tin roofs and those were considered the good houses some people were living actually in shacks made of pallets and we were presented with these as elders and it was a two-day ceremony they're all handmade they're all hand handmade. Beaded. there we go janet hold your one up to the middle because yours is particularly if you don't mind me saying so particularly um engaging Look at those. Well, only the ladies are allowed the phallic ones. Yeah, well, you... you, you... <laughs> They're a matriarchal <laughs> society. <laughs> They're actually held like this. And when we arrived, we sat down in this house and everybody had these and their beads. And traditional, traditional dress for them was prints or skins, not many skins now, but prints and skins of animals because they're animistic and they connect with their own animal spirit. And when people come in to arrive, I mean, these are Sangoma from all over the area, from the little communities. And they would come to the door and tell their story. Then everybody would dance outside and they would carry these. And they have a feast and you are expected to pay for the feast, which means we bought chocolate. <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, and the old lady there, one old lady had never tasted chocolate in her life. She grabbed the entire bar and ran away with it and said, that's all mine. Um, and uh, the goat, unfortunately, yeah, had its throat fresh cut. goat meat, which is very, very normal there for that to happen. But that, It feeds the whole community. It feeds the young and the elderly and, and, the the and the sick. So uh, we were also expected to have this really interesting yoghurt beer to drink, uh, which was also presented to the goat before it was... Uh, dispatched to the ancestors. And the other thing was, I'm sure this will interest you, Julian, this rather interesting snuff, which was burnt Ooh. as well. Rather I interesting from here, that's amazing. Qualities. Uh, along with the star came the bracelets. Which I'm wearing. And it's wearing. Right. And I was given by Sangoma elders, which some of the white South Africans said, oh, you're now a witch doctor. Um, I don't think it's a term <laughs> they use. But they might because they really don't, don't care. Uh, it's you can tell who gave it to you by the design on the back and the way the beads are put together. Oh well. Wow. And it was given to me by Caroline the Elder. There. And he was a naughty boy. Yeah. Uh, you see, you're expected to give the elder who hosts you a gift. Gavin gives her runes. I gave her a set of runes. I wanted to do a cross cultural. And this is the most fascinating aspect of this, because what happened was this. I took her aside and I said, I want to give you something which is from our culture. So I had this set of runes for her. And I said, these are called runes. They're like your stones. And I started to explain them. And I said they were from an ancestor that hung on a tree. And she said, oh, we've got one of them. You know, later on, I, I realized that everywhere you go around the world and you talk to these tribes, there's somebody hanging on a tree getting knowledge. It's everywhere. And I said, well, this was an ancestor hung on a tree. And so we got one of them. And I started to put the runes down and explain the meanings. So I put the first one down, which is Fjall. Anglo-Saxon Fjall, Norse Fehu. I said, this is cattle. And she, I didn't finish the sentence. She said, oh, cattle, yes. So this means money, doesn't it? And exchange of money and wealth. And <laughs> okay. I went she to, went through all the runes and she was perfect. I, apart from, I, as I explained them, I tried to explain them related to culture, like trees related to theirs. And by the end of it, she knew them. It was an incredible experience. And it, 
reinforced something I always believed, that the runes were something which were animistic and tribal. Um, and I walked away from that and I suddenly thought, you know, a thousand years' time, they're going to find Sangoma using runes and they're going to be wondering how the Vikings got there. <laughs> And there'll and they'll be there'll be there'll be witches using these astonishing objects. Can you hold them up again? And, and Jenny, oh, no. can you show off your beadwork as well, your bracelet it's, things. The be- you've got to remember these people are so poor that if they drop any of these beads on the floor, and we saw this happen, they'll get down on their hands and knees and pick them up. Every individual bead. Wow, these those are that valuable. Are, those are amazing. Um, Janet and Gavin, thank you so much for your amazing cross-cultural uh, part, uh, taking part here in uh, My Magical Thing. Really, really appreciate it. It's been it. our Love pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, Mwah. we'll see you soon, darling. Somehow, when this far, thing, horrible thing is over this virus. We'll, we'll do see it. You. We'll do it. Stay safe. Everybody, stay safe and take care. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs>